Fazlur Rahman Khan, 1929-1982. Unfortunately, he died at 52 of a heart attack. He could have created much more, but even so, he is immensely significant. In fact, in fact, some people think of him as being the Einstein of structural engineering of the 20th century. Can you imagine? Uh, so I'm 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 not at all uh, the most uh, adequate person to talk about an engineer because I I'm I'm, I'm my knowledge about um, uh, about uh, this this side of um, of, of uh, what relates to architecture is not sufficient, but but I I cannot ignore this man so I will talk about him. But please consider that I am um, I am not uh, an expert far from it. So I will just say some general things and we'll, 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 we'll comment maybe together we'll, on, on, on his accomplishments. So Fazlur Rahman Khan was born on April 3rd, 1929, was a structural engineer and architect, although he didn't study architecture, but his engineering is architecture, who initiated important structural systems for skyscrapers. Considered the father of tubular designs for high rises, Khan also a, was, was also a pioneer in computer aided design. Now, wait a minute, he died in 80, 1982. What does that mean? He was a pioneer in computer aided design. We still don't use computer aided design sufficiently, 40 years later. So this man, before 1980 or 1982, in fact, around 1975, he was already promoting with great intensity the use of the computer AD design. So he was the designer of the Sears Tower, since, re since renamed Willis Tower, the tallest building in the world from 1973 until 1998. So that is 25 years. For 25 years, the building he, he, um, he was the designer of was the tallest building in the world and the 100 story great John Hancock Center, both in Chicago. Um, a partner in the firm Skidmore, Owings and Merrill in Chicago, Khan, more than any other individual, ushered in a renaissance in skyscraper construction during the second half of the 20th century. He has been called the Einstein of structural engineering and the greatest structural engineer of the 20th century for his innovative use of structural systems that remain fundamental to modern skyscraper design and construction. In his honor, the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat established the Fazlur Khan Lifetime Achievement Medal as one of the CTBUH skyscraper awards. Although best known for skyscrapers, Khan was also an active designer of other kinds of structures, including the Haijin, sorry for the pronunciation, airport terminal, the McMath Pierce Solar Telescope, and several stadium structures. And look what he said, and I love this. He said he believed that engineers needed a broader perspective on life. And he said, the technical man must not be lost in his own technology. He must be able to appreciate life and life is art, drama, music, and most importantly, people. I think what this engineer said is equally relevant to architects because we are not just uh, practitioners of some technical uh, aspect of uh, the art uh, the art of building, but indeed we must not be lost in those technicalities. They are necess necessary, they are, but they are not sufficient. So the architect, if I'm paraphrasing, the architect must be able to appreciate life and life as art. Life is art, drama, music, and most importantly, people. Beautiful. When you hear, when you read, when you see that an engineer said this, Bravo to him. This was the man. And uh, <laughs> look, uh, look, you know, the big tower behind is by him. Uh, it's, 
it is beautiful. You are born in Bangladesh, which at that time was probably one of the poorest, if not the poorest country on earth. And he arrived to, to in a way, he brought a, a fresh air into the building of skyscrapers because conventionally the old skyscrapers like the Empire State Building required above a certain uh, height immense investments. It was not at all an easy enterprise and, uh, and uh, very expensive. And the structure, if it was used in a static way, uh, uh, meant uh, to, to decrease the, the usable space within the skyscraper. So for about 30 years, there was a big dilemma. If, 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 if it was uh, feasible, I mean, feasible it was, but if it was advisable to continue to be like this. And this man discovered the way of building skyscrapers, and I will say a few words about it, um, that, that, that reduced significantly the cost and also increased the, 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 uh, the aesthetics of the building. This is the Hancock Tower in Chicago, which is uh, still one of the greatest buildings in Chicago. And he was, yes, he was the engineer, but, but the architect he worked with uh, uh, acknowledged that he was equally uh, the designer of the building. Because for a tall building, the, the engineer has really, really a higher role. And uh, the architect could, uh, I mean, you know, the collaboration between architect and designer or archi the architect and the engineer is a very close one. So if the engineer is not uh, creative, then the tower uh, could, uh, could collapse physically or could collapse aesthetically. Uh, so uh, he must have been a, a, a proud man that here he is with, uh, with uh, the architect Graham from Skidmore Row in St. Mary. Here is the engineer looking at the model of the Hancock Tower. Do you see how modest he is? I love this. You know, this is his role probably in the making of this building was, was bigger than the work of the, of, the, of the role of the architect. His invention was this, if I understood correctly, maybe inspired by the bamboo cubes, the bamboo existent at the, around Dhaka in Bangladesh when he was a young man there or a child, he thought that that uh, tubular structure uh, where, the, where the, 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 the structural parts of the building are actually at the edges on the, on the facades, this acted like a, like a tube in a way. It was emptied of, of, of a heavy structure within but, but the periphery of the building, the, 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 the carcass of the building contained or was what was really the structure. So, you know, these diagonals, these reinforcements were necessary, but also I would say aesthetically very pleasing. And, uh, you know, as opposed to the buildings that you see here, this one had a, a, even an aesthetical personality, which was uh, complemented by uh, uh, beautifully by uh, an increased efficiency and uh, and um, lower costs uh, and so on. This is the Sears Tower, also which was for 25 years the tallest building in the world. Now, of course, there are others taller, but still the Sears Tower. Where does the name Sears come from? The Sears was a big company. I don't know if they're still uh, alive um, in, in in Chicago. And uh, yeah, this was their tower. Um, anyway, we'll see other pictures with it. But look at this building from 1962. But maybe I should say something uh, a little about his biography. So he was born in, in, in Bangladesh. His father was a math teacher. Uh, and uh, he was actually born in a, in a village. And then uh, they moved around. I think they went to Dhaka. Then he earned, uh, he studied uh, engineering, I think, there. And then he earned a fellowship in the United States. He went to the United States. He studies at the, the, studies at the University of Chicago in um, uh, Illinois, Urbana. Um, he got two masters in three years. And then he got a PhD in uh, structural engineering. Then he was hired by the uh, famous uh, firm Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. And in 10 years, he became a partner in that firm. 
This building was done with Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, and is a, is a remarkable building. Look at this. Look at this, you know. It, it fills my heart with joy and my eye with joy because it's so simple, but it's, I don't know, it's dynamic, it's, uh, it's uh, provocative, it's cultural, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's yes, it's, it's, it's say, it says yes to life somehow, if I don't get too exalted. I love this building. It's a it's a telescope, but uh, uh, you know to be an engineer. Apparently, I mean the engineer, the architect that you saw him with um, Graham, he uh, Bruce or Bill Graham. He he said that um, uh, he was impressed by the purity of thought of this engineer, uh, whom he knew very well because they co collaborated on various projects. But what, uh, what is this purity of thought? It's actually the poet in the man. He was an engineer poet. That's what he was. Just as, uh, just as Einstein was a poet. Uh, the great, uh, if you are great in anything, you are by necessity a poet. Doesn't matter what you are. Even if you are a tailor, if you do tailoring in a great way, uh, you are a poet. Even if you clean the street, if you do it with that re religiousness of the of the Buddhist monk, uh, uh, with that devotion, with that attention of a detail uh, uh, to the details, even then you are a poet. Yes, you are. Uh, uh, you clean the streets in the name of poetry. You are a poet. You can be a poet doing doesn't matter what, even washing dishes, maybe. I, I'm not so sure about that. But but I will tell you a secret. I discovered the way to to escape the the, the the malevolence of washing dishes, not by not washing them. I will tell you about it at the end if you remind me. So Dewitt Chestnut Apartments from Chicago, 1963. Um, well, this is a rectangular building, but it's very tall and it's you know it, I think it has a certain elegance and a certain dignity and uh, he was uh, he was the engineer. Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, you know, the, the percentage of, 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 of the decisions that he took per se in the, in the erection of these buildings. But at this scale, obviously, the engineering uh, was, uh, was significant. And I do think, uh, I, I mean, is this building uh, uh, less impressive than some buildings by Miss, who was also in Chicago and he was influencing at that time a lot of the aesthetics even here, you know. I don't know. I, I don't feel this building is so bad. Maybe the base is um, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit uh, predictable, but this, this prism, I think it has a, it's something nice, I think, about uh, the, 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 this monolith somehow. Anyway. The Brunswick building in Chicago, 1965, I don't have pictures as so now we arrive at one of the quintessential buildings of Chicago, the famous Gen John Hancock Center from 1965 to 1969. Uh, this building is truly great. Uh, and uh, uh, the, his role, in fact, he's considered the designer of this building. And it's an emblematic building for Chicago. Uh, there was an adventure with this building because, you know, he proposed a different type of structure and uh, it was a big adventure and he had to convince the clients and uh, even uh, his partners, his colleagues at SOM, you know, it's, it, you take upon yourself big risks, big, big responsibilities, you know, because this building could have collapsed. Uh, you know, we are talking about a giant building. And there are, there is the wind, uh, you know, there are all kinds of uh, uh, conditions. It's not just that I am, uh, you know, uh, playing with a tall building here. No, the responsibilities are great. And um, he took his role very seriously and he, uh, he won in the sense that uh, his uh, revolution in, uh, we, we see all the other buildings. In all the other buildings, we have a plan with a grid of columns, you know, uh, that go all the way from the bottom to the top. Here, 
the structure is mainly at the outskirts at the outside of the building on the periphery so it's a tube it's 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 a tube inspired by the bamboo uh, that he saw uh, all around himself in uh, in uh, in bangladesh uh, to 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 have the brilliant idea the unexpected idea to to be inspired by 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 uh, the bamboo is actually not so fragile you know it, it appears to be fragile but it's actually very strong but to to go from a, a tubular bamboo to a tubular john hancock is a long distance and it took the brilliance and not just the intuition because this was also we are dealing with an engineer here he had to make the calculations and and he did did the calculations correctly so the building it's impressive aesthetically it's functioning well and uh, you know uh, it was the passport for uh, uh, Khan to towards uh, stardom in the field of uh, in a field where engineers are not very often uh, stars bravo to him and you know his his existential uh, model uh, uh, impresses me that that you know if you have something to say and you have a calling, what uh, what uh, Stephen Hall called um, the idealism within you. Allow it to happen. Allow it to express itself. Prepare yourself as well as you can. Study, uh, get ready, and fight for what you believe in. This is what this man did. He fought for what he believed in. Here they are, you know. And he was the only immigrant here. You know, all these were North Americans. You know, and look at them. They were staring at, at the Hancock. He's the most humble between them, but he actually did. He actually designed this building. Bravo to him. Bravo to him. And happy birthday to him. This is, uh, you know, <laughs> the magician, right? Uh, Houdini of skyscrapers. He's, uh, look, uh, the buildings until him were built differently. And he had this idea coming from the modest bamboo in uh, near Dhaka, in the village where he was born. Isn't true then what um, what Louis Kahn said, spirit in will to express can make the great sun seem small? I think it is. Uh, yeah. So some images from his uh, life with his parents. Uh, maybe this is him here. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know if this is uh, his, I imagine she's his daughter, not his wife. Here is his wife, uh, I think with, uh, she came from Austria. Uh, and anyway, <laughs> you see the way he laughs is, is is the laughter of a man who understands that life is is ephemeral for all of us really we are born in order to die but it depends what you do with this life you know if you live it creatively uh, passionately uh, then you yeah, then you earn it these are buildings by him we already saw this one this one we'll see at the end it was finalized after his death this is the hancock tower so was he an engineer? Yes. Was he also an architect? I would say yes. I would say yes. I mean, here, the structure of the building became architecture, became uh, almost ornamental, no? Because these diagonals, just like in the Hancock building, also have an aesthetical function, which is actually derived from, uh, uh, strangely, perhaps, from, uh, from uh, necessity. One Shell Square, New Orleans, Louisiana, 1972. Another, you know, prism, uh, very pure and uh, I would say convincing in its uh, uh, determination. If you are lucky to work with an engineer who has a poet in him or her, then you can accomplish things like this, you know, because because if the engineer is open-minded and also likes to be challenged, like for example, Klaus Berlinger, the, the Dean of the School of Architecture in Vienna, of uh, IOA, he's an engineer, a German engineer, 
and uh, you know he at, at, at evaluations of works and they do incredible works they're extremely 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 experimental and wild he says don't bore me with with uh, with things already seen i want to be challenged too a good engineer also wants to be challenged for a good engineer practicing engineering is also an adventure and should be an adventure otherwise it's a banal task which only brings uh, on uh, you know boredom so so 8040 William Street uh, in Melbourne, in Australia. Uh, again, his beloved diagonals, and I love diagonals too. I think the diagonals are the black is the black sheep of uh, the diagonal is the black sheep of, of life, but we need them. And strangely, sometimes the black sheep saves the white sheep. Uh, this is the plan. The plan seems to be, uh, you know, not uh, not very, uh, you know. Uh, unique or even impressive but it has a purity which is um, undeniable and the expression what can i say is a tall building but very tall and uh, so he was the engineer for this building in melbourne now the sears tower renamed willis tower from 1970 to 1973 and we learned already that for the for 25 years it was the tallest building in the world. And look at this. This is the uh, in the four uh, in, in, in here in the front was the Hancock Tower, and this was uh, the Sears Tower. And I don't know about the other two, but these two buildings were done structurally, but I would say more than just structurally by the Bangladesh-born uh, engineer. Bravo to him, going above the clouds. Now, of course, you know, we could, uh, the cynic or the, 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 the pessimist would say, should we go above the cloud, clouds? I don't know. I mean, I, do, I know we are humiliated now in a way by all kinds of problems, and, uh, but maybe we should be humiliated. Maybe we learn something from the pandemic and from uh, the climate change. And you, you can achieve levels of excellence in various ways. This is the tower, the Sears Tower by, uh, by Rahmud, uh, Rahmat Khan. Um, it's not a little thing, you know, to, to build such a building. And just uh, two weeks ago, we had the, the, the honor, actually, to have with us the architect who built the third tallest building. So, Gini Gang built the third tallest building in Chicago after the Sears Tower and the Hancock Tower, where the engineer was Rahmat Khan. And it still hurts me that we couldn't understand the significance of, of our visitor and that no one from the many architects and, uh, and, and professors and, and so on participated to say hello to Ginny Gang. I just find it unbelievable, you know. <laughs> And we didn't have to pay her thousands and thousands of euros or dollars as she's paid when she gives lectures at various universities in the world, because uh, other people appreciate her presence much more than we do. We didn't have to pay anything, and still we didn't participate. And we have to face this painful truth, our incredible indifference to something important. And it was important that this lady on her birthday chose to be with us for one hour and a half. We could have had a dialogue with her. We could have asked her questions. Thankfully, there were 35 students. But without them, there would have been almost no one to say happy birthday to her. And I repeat, Ginny Gang just built, the, the, you can check on the web, the third tallest skyscraper in Chicago, the first two being this one, the Sears building, and the Hancock Tower, where the engineer was uh, Rahmad uh, Khan. These are giant buildings. And uh, again, you know, uh, here on, on, on the diagram and on the sketch, you know, it's just uh, 15 centimeters tall. <laughs> but 
this is not how it is in reality and people work and live in those you know places and the responsibility to see, build such a building is immense and uh, Rahman Khan of course he was not alone but uh, he responded brilliantly to the call and the building still, still stands tall so to speak tall indeed And also he didn't, not only that he was able to achieve, uh, you know, such uh, you know, uh, tall buildings, but also they were efficiently done. I mean, of course it was an expensive building, but he did it as inexpensively as possible. And I'm glad now that I remember something. There was a war in Bangladesh, maybe a, a war between Bangladesh and Pakistan. And this man, this man defended uh, and not only defended, you know, with words, he created a foundation, uh, a compassionate foundation to help the people in Bangladesh. You know, and uh, I, I cannot avoid uh, thinking of Zaha, who didn't do anything for the people in Iraq when they were bombed by planes from the United States and Great Britain. You know, um, uh, it hurts me to think about this. This man, and you can read on Wikipedia, took an active role in, 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 in helping, you know, to, 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 to serve the welfare of, of, of the poor people in Bangladesh. Uh, and I think people in such position like his, or like in the case of Zaha, you know, the, the word is, is listened to, is, is, is considered, is, is important to have such people speak out. And those who do not speak out, uh, I think, uh, are prone to take upon themselves uh, almost a sin, I would say. Anyway, whatever Louis Kahn might say, because Louis Kahn said, uh, a painter can protest a war, but making the wheels of the war machine square. So not round, square. But the architect has to make them round. I doubt it. I have the highest affection for Louis Kahn. But I think in case of a war, the architect should also make the wheels of the, of the war machine square. In other words, to sabotage that war machine. So it won't work. Here we see the Sears Tower and the new World Trade Center, which was also built by SOM with a different designer, uh, David Child. Um, so Sears Tower, was, Sears Tower was actually a little taller than the, the present day World Trade Center, but, but uh, the World Trade Center went a little above with the antenna. The building itself is a little bit shorter than um, uh, Sears Tower. And here we have, I keep quoting, I keep saying to the students what uh, Greg Pasquarelli, the chief designer of the group shop in New York said, when asked, what do you recommend uh, the students in architecture? And he said, on one hand, philosophy, theory, history, and on the other hand, the newest technical uh, uh, digital technologies, scripting and programming and so on. He said this in 2018, he designed this building right in the center and he's still young. This is the World Trade Center. Uh, uh, as it is built now. This is the Sears Tower with a designer, I would say, uh, our uh, our man today, Rahman Khan. And uh, this one, uh, I'm not, I don't know this building, strangely. I, I just don't know it. Anyway, um, first Wisconsin Center, renamed U.S. Bank Center in Milwaukee from 1973. Well, you know, maybe not an exceptional building, but uh, it has structural purity and it works and it didn't fall. And uh, yes, it is a bank. What else could it be in the present, right? It's not the tower of books like we saw in Ghent by uh, Henri van der Velt, it's uh, the tower of money. Uh, we have plenty of towers of money in the world today. Uh, but the ing engineer is not to be, um, you know, uh, accused in any way for for uh, for serving this. He tried to do a good job as an engineer, and he did. Now, 
This is a brilliant airport, and maybe you saw it uh, published. It was published extensively from 1974 to 1980. So more than 40 years ago, this man had, a, a, again, a very creative uh, a participation in uh, in this uh, in this uh, project you know uh, and so adequately because we are talking about the arab world right where the tent is very very important it's part of the culture so i would say that ahmad khan uh, not being an architect he actually uh, acknowledged and served uh, honored what Alvar Alto said, architecture belongs to culture. This is indeed a building that serves civilization, but because of the way he interpreted the local culture into the making of this big airport, he brought it to culture as well. So it's not just civilization, it's culture. And maybe in the first thing, and in the first, yes, uh, firstly, uh, 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 culture. I like this building. You know, it's uh, it's 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 architecture. It's it, it, technology. Yes, is very present, but uh, I think he, uh, he he was able to to give uh, uh, architectonic expression, uh, although it is a essentially a technological building. Uh, uh, you know, to a function which. Uh, uh, you know, could have been uh, indifferent to the local conditions. And then this tent uh, that he uses here uh, uh, is, uh, it belongs to, 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 to that country, to that part of the world. And at the same time, it's not, um, it's not uh, alien to, to, to the planes, to what an airport is. I think it's a brilliant uh, airport. And, and, and again, we are dealing with a creative force in engineering, a man who understood that life comes first, and then the technical aspects which are supposed to serve life, and not the other way around, not have life serve the technical aspects, but the technical aspects to serve life. It's a good building. It's a good building, and he was, no doubt, a great engineer. There were a few other great engineers in the, in the 20th century, uh, but he was certainly one of them. I mean, look, look at even the, the uh, abstractness and the cryptical abstractness almost of the plan. You know, it's, it's, it's magical, I would say. There is poetry here, you know, uh, in as much as there is poetry in mathematics. A, a great mathematician is a poet and, uh, and uh, a great engineer is a poet. Now, I regret that when I was in Chicago, I didn't apply to work for SOM. I am beginning to like, I mean, this was also built by SOM, Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, and uh, Rahmad Khan was just, you know, the, the one in charge with this project together with the architect. But they, they have interesting projects and we'll see one built after his death. In fact, quite a number of years after his death, influenced by his, uh, 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 innovations in, in, in structure, uh, a very interesting building. Uh, now, this university, uh, I couldn't find pictures of, it was mentioned on Wikipedia that he did the engineering, but I couldn't find pictures. Now we arrive at the university sports hall designed by Fry Otto. I sort of including this because Fry Otto was also a, a, a great force in, uh, in the field of uh, uh, innovative structures and I, I love this building by Fry Otto. So again, this building that you are going to see now is not by Rahmad Khan, but by Fry Otto. Beautiful. You know, it's beautiful. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, necessity and freedom together. And it's also the local culture. I think uh, Fry Otto, Otto was also able to, to, to get the tent even at the, this very large scale, because it is a, a, a stadium. I didn't know of the existence of this building, but preparing the material on a Rahmat Khan, I came across this building and I just couldn't leave it out. 
I love it. It's, it's, I mean, you know, if you compare it with the stadium that uh, Kengo Kuma built now in Japan, this is a pure creation and it's highly innovative and very intriguing aesthetically. And what Kengo Kuma did in Tokyo uh, now for the Olympics is, is just a pathetic, uh, uh, mediocre building, uh, despite the fact that Kengo Kuma is not a banal architect, but it just did a banal job for the, for the stadium. And here, sorry for the resolution, but just like in the case of the, of the airport that uh, Rahmat Khan did, here we also see the tent interpreted and brought into, into, into action, so to speak, at the level of a very high, light, you know, uh, large scale uh, building. So yes, this building belongs to the Arab world, but uh, it was a German who, 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 who brilliantly uh, used uh, uh, significant technology to, to connect with the archaic past of, uh, of that place. And now uh, this is a metrodome that did by Rahmat uh, Khan in 1982. And uh, I think he died in 1982. So uh, the building was either finished when he died or uh, finished shortly after he died. Uh, also interesting and very different from uh, the skyscrapers that we saw. But uh, um, I don't know what much, probably some kind of a synthetic material, artificial material is used to cover the, the, the dome. It's very, very large. And uh, yes, the, the job of the engineer is an exciting one, just as the job of the architect is, a, is a, a, an exciting one, if it is assumed as an adventure, as a creation, as a discovering something new, giving birth to something. Just imagine that two parents, a mother and a father, give birth to a child who is identical to a child given, given birth two or three years ago by some other parents. Would there be something more grotesque? You should tell this to your professors. I cannot do something that was done by other people. I cannot do it. I just can't. It is exactly the same thing. You know, two parents giving birth to a child who is almost identical to another child or other children from other uh, times and other places. It is, it, is, it is unacceptable. It's against life. Anyway, uh, so a stadium, a big, big stadium by, by Rahmat Khan. And uh, again, we see the, the brilliance of a, of a creative engineer. And yes, life is beautiful if it is an adventure. Architecture is beautiful if it is an adventure. Otherwise, and now we arrive at, uh, at another skyscraper. This was finished, completed after he died. He died in 1982, one magnificent mile in Chicago. I don't know. I mean, here the, the structure maybe is less obvious because it's hidden behind the skin of the buildings, the towers. Yes, they are impressive, yes, they are big, they are massive, but uh, somehow I like more the purity of the design with the Hancock Tower. Uh, but this was built in those unfortunate 80s when uh, postmodernism was looming large and uh, still it's a, you know, it's not a shame this building, but uh, I have a feeling here the role of the architect was a little bit bigger than the role of the archi of uh, the role of the engineer. Once I wrote an essay, and uh, maybe I can find it uh, called "SOM Without SOS." After attending a lecture in New York at Columbia University by two members of the this great firm, uh, Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, but at that time in the 80s and early 90s, they were not as adventurous as they were previously and as they seem to be now. I will end the presentation with a building they built um, um, in uh, 2016, inspired by the uh, tubular structuralism or structures of uh, Rahmad Khan. And I will end uh, very soon. Uh, this is also a building which I showed in one picture and uh, was done based on his structural design, which I think is a good building. 
uh, it's massive, but it's also a little bit decorative, and so it's it's softened, and I think it's 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 excellent, you know, where the structure also becomes ornamental. So from the bamboo to here, nice, a nice trip. And the, I end now the presentation with this brilliant work by Skidmore Rowings and Meryl Dunn, uh, God, uh, almost 40 years after Rahmat Khan died. But this work is shown on Wikipedia on the list with his works because it's very possible without him, with how, without his structural innovations, this building would not have been done like this. And it is indeed a, a, a tubular structure. Uh, uh, it's just that it's not vertical. Uh, the Air, uh, US Air Force Academy, the Center for Character and Leadership Development. And I, I even like, in fact, I like very much that they have such a building for such a almost metaphysical function. It's a center for character and leadership development. Maybe we should have such a room in our university as, as well, a center for character and leadership development. Because what, would you, what do you do without character and without being encouraged to become you know, uh, the best that you could become? Uh, if you, maybe not everybody is meant to be a leader, but uh, uh, I think everybody has something within that needs to be encouraged. So the fact that US Air Force Academy had such a, uh, has such a building and such a function to me is uh, very interesting and very telling. This is the building. Surprise, surprise. But I would say someone who has character, someone who believes in his or her own truth is like this building, aspiring towards the heights, aspiring towards the sun, uh, being inspired by idealism. And it moves me to see that the American army, and I am far from, from, from uh, advocating anything having to do with the army, but maybe even at that level, there is this need for, for honesty, for, uh, for uh, uh, being, uh, yes, to have integrity, you know, to, you know, uh, I don't know if I find the correct words now, but it moves me that such a building exists on, on even uh, you know serving uh, uh, serving serving the army. Um, here I have a problem somehow because these chairs they are turning their backs on this uh, uh, giant uh, tube. Maybe it was meant like this in order to have the speaker or those who speak uh, from the podium uh, uh, be oriented uh, towards this. Uh, this uh, you know geometrical vortex, or I don't know how to call it, but um, the, the the structure here, if it was not designed by him per se, it was based on his design because you saw and his principles. You saw the Hancock Tower; it was moving the structure at the outskirts of the building, and that's exactly what is happening here as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think the, the building is designed brilliantly and there is another building also designed by SOM and I'm going to show it here, which is a chapel. Both buildings in a way serve a metaphysical function, you know, a center for uh, character development and a chapel. Um, even the, you know, the interior of the building, this was not designed, of course, by Rahmat Khan, but uh, I think it's designed very well by by Skidmore Rowings and Mary. It's 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 a it's a austere yet warm, discreet, uh, reticent but uh, but uh, determined uh, environment. It is the army, but it is a human army, and the building here you see the chapel. This is the chapel was was which was built in 1960s by SOM, and this is the Center for Character Development built in 2016. So 56 years later from this building, they build this one.
you know my affection for the diagonal. You know my affection for the black sheep, Why Niagara. I even thought of, uh, you, you know, trying to, to found uh, another kind of school of architecture called Why Niagara, to, to, to encourage those who think differently. And uh, this is what we see here too. This building is encouraging certain people, not all soldiers, but some of them, to be exactly that, to be themselves, to be different. This is the diagonal of difference, la différence, vive la différence. And, uh, you know, what would we do without those who, 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 who do just this? What would we do? What would life be? I think it's a good building. It's a good building and it was built uh, 40 something years after the death of, uh, um, no, a little bit less than 40 years. Uh, he died in 1882. This was built in 2016. Uh, but you see, this is the power of art and this is also the power of brilliance in general. This was an engineer who remained in the hearts and minds of his, of, of his colleagues. Maybe some, some are still alive at SOM and, and they continued his vision through this building. Because you remember, I started the presentation with that uh, uh, telescope, which was also in a way similar to this one. And so the, there is a continuum here and is the continuum of ideas, of knowledge. Uh, as that uh, uh, Romanian architect told me uh, the other day, you know, no, no, sorry, uh, I was referring to something that uh, I was watching today uh, on, on YouTube, where a German architect said we shouldn't leave behind waste, but knowledge. And that's what uh, Rachmad Khan left behind him, knowledge, and not just knowledge, but also inspiration. It's a very interesting building and somehow connected with a chapel. And I will end actually the presentation by showing a little bit also about this famous chapel, which was published extensively in the 60s in L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui, the Domus, all the important architectural magazines of that time. So here is the chapel and here is the, um, the Center for Character Development. What is it in essence? Is the room of human aspiration to become the best we could become. It's, it's about that, you know. Maybe we could not become gods or godlike, but we could move, we can make steps towards being our best, you know, trying to achieve our best potential, ethically as well, because it is important. And here is a, an image of the, of the building site. Uh, and uh, what can I say? We can take our hats off uh, in front of what SOM did here, in my opinion. And the chapel. I will end the presentation on Rahmat uh, Khan with this chapel, which he didn't build. He was not the engineer of this building, but because I presented the, the building that I just did, I thought of saying a few things about the chapel. It's, a, it's an excellent uh, building. It's a, it's, 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 it's a chapel. It has a re religious function, but it is a chapel for the cadets from the soldiers who are trained in this academy. So its aesthetics are connected with, 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 uh, with the function of this, of this building in that particular place. Yes, you might say it has something militaristic, but it also has, I mean, yes, the rhythmicity and yes, but I think it's a very appropriately designed building. You know, it is a religious building, but meant for uh, these uh, students of the of the, the U.S. Uh, Air Force Academy. And it was also designed, as I said, by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill in the 1960s. Here is an image of the inside. So in the 60s, brilliance. In the 80s and 70s and 60s, brilliance coming from uh, Rahmat Khan. And uh, in 2016, again, brilliance with the Center for uh, uh, Character Development. This is a, a picture that moves me. Here are the 
the cadets, you know, the fanfare, I don't know how it is called, the band, you know, uh, and then behind them, you know, protective and uh, with, a, with an obvious uh, verticality and dignity, the, the, the chapel, and then the mountains. I think it's a great picture. Maybe the resolution you know, is not great. And this is the last picture of the presentation, uh, a drawing with a, with a chapel uh, in the campus of the US um, Air Force Academy. Thank you and happy birthday, um, Rahmad Khan.